Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph. Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa mathematics. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam! All right. So, ayan. Good afternoon sa inyo lahat. So, it's a Monday once again. And ibig sabihin niyan, we will be having our session for Senior High School, Earth and Life Science. So, we are now on quarter four, week number three. So, nakakatatlo na tayo, pangatlo na tayo. So, we are, ang pinaka-focus na ating session for this afternoon would be about the perpetuation of life. So, basically, when we say perpetuation, this refers to the way how living organisms reproduce. So, sumadaling salita, reproduction. So, once again, I am Sir Tony, or Tutor Tony for Senior High School Earth and Life, Earth and Life Science. Samahan niyo po ako hanggang 4.40 this afternoon at patuloy po natin i-discover, i-appreciate ang ganda ng buhay. Alright, so we are now, uh, so we are still using the module provided by Region 4A Calabarzon or the Pivot module. So, specifically for this session, We'll be utilizing module number 23 with the same title, Perpetuation of Life. Yeah. So I hope uh, everyone's ready and everyone's safe. No, sobrang init ng panahon ngayon. Yung iba, uh, may mga pa rain showers, thunderstorms. I hope you're doing fine. You're doing safe. No, So you're doing uh, great so far. You're starting the week so far. So I hope uh, ready na rin ang inyong mga ball pen or lapis or papers. A copy of your module will also be of great help. And as always, presence of mind at saka presence of heart. Kailangan na kailangan natin yan every time na nag-aaral tayo. And of course, since we are we have we are having a virtual session or learning session, so samahan nyo naman ako mag, uh, makipag-interact kayo kay Tutor Tony by typing your comments, your shoutouts, uh, yung mga classmates niyo or yung mga teachers niyo. Just uh, indicate in, your comment uh, in the comment section your name and your location or might as well the name of your school. 
Okay, so I hope everyone's ready. Ayan, so actually we are now on the last day of May and sa mga previous session natin last May, ang ina-highlight natin is about diversity. So we forgot that May is actually the month of the ocean. So with the theme, the science we need for the ocean we want. So I hope uh, makatulong itong mga tips na ito. So actually uh, we are blessed with a uh, very... Uh, diverse na ocean, di ba, na nakakatulong sa ating livelihood, di ba, and of course, sa ating mga tourism, uh, tourism destinations natin. So, how can we help the ocean? So, madaling ano lang, uh, commercial lang or info trivia lang ni Sir Tony. So, first is use fewer plastic products hanggat, ma hanggat maaari, no? So, we refrain from using plastic products because some of these plastic products, they end up sa mga oceans natin. And some of these plastic contains ang tinatawag natin na mga microplastic na nakaka-apekto rin kapag na-ingest yan or nakain ng mga marine organisms. Next, kung may pagkakataon, uh, we join the uh, coastal cleanup, so we clean the beach. Next is eat sustainably, so ano ibig sabihin nun? Protect ocean life diversity by knowing where your seafood comes from. And of course, we avoid eating marine creatures na talagang totally, hindi naman talaga siya uh, kinakain. And at the same time, ayun, so maganda rin na from time to time kumakain tayo ng seafood kasi instead of eating meat products, mas yun nga, meat products kasi na ang product uh, galing yan sa or nakapag-produce yan ng malaking carbon footprints. Alright? Of course, another tip is use eco-friendly products. So the same principle sa mga kanina na banggit ni Sir Tony na plastic products. And of course, saving water would be a great help. So these are some of the ways how we can contribute in helping uh, the ocean clean, uh, maintaining it, uh, the beauty na sana maabutan ng, ano, no, ng iba't iba pang mga or mga darating pa na generation. So once again, May is month of the ocean. All right. So last week, uh, we actually... Uh, studied about the unifying themes in biology last week, diba? if you would remember. And we our, stud, our discussion focused on the 10 unifying themes. And once again, these are the biological system. The second one, all of us, all living organisms are made up of cells. We also have, yes, of course, the third one is we have to interact with the environment. Of course, we also need energy and light para makapag-survive tayo at makapag-function uh, tayo sa living organism. We also discussed about form and function, kung paano siya nakaka-apekto, the way living organisms adapt or the way living organisms live on a specific habitat. We also discussed about reproduction and inheritance, how, uh, how organisms reproduce. Ayan yung magiging highlight ng ating session for this afternoon. We also have regulation, if you would remember, di ba? How organisms, specifically us humans, maintain homeostasis, yung balance or the internal balance. We also have discussed about adaptation, the need to evolve so for evolution, and then finally, how biology and uh, different researches conducted affect the society. So these are the unifying themes in biology once again. So, uh, okay na tayo dyan. So we'll be proceeding with week number three now. So as a review, ayan, tingnan natin yung comment section. No? Sana uh, okay kayong mahiyang mag-comment mag na magsagot, especially to our senior high school learners or kahit hindi senior high school learners. Parents, teachers, and all the other viewers can also interact with us. And say, for example, number one, fact or bluff, biological system can be classified or can be applied to all levels of life, starting to the molecules of our cells, all the way up to the whole biosphere. So technically, that is a fact. Tama, ayan. So number two, second statement, all organisms are made up of, take note, similar and one kind of cell. So, isang klase lang ba ng cell ang nag, uh, nagko-comprise sa mga living organisms? Of course, that is number two, or statement number two is a block. So, we are, there's a variety, kaya nga iba't iba yung ano, diba? Living organisms. Alright? Let's have number three. Ayan, may mga sumasagot. So, JJ, JJ, Rio Florido Guela says facts. So, siguro sa number one. Good job, JJ. Alright? Let's try number three. The coordination of the form and functional parts on the natawag na form, fit, function, theme strengthens the structure of life. So kapag okay ang tandem ng anatomy, morphology, at physiology ng isang organism, it strengthens the structure of life. Of course, the answer is, yeah, it's a fact. Alright, let's try number four. So habang pinaflash ko number four, 
Uh, mabilis na shout out lang sa ating mga early ano, comments haters. <laughs> May comments sa ating comment section. So we have, ayan, Machi Estenberg. Good afternoon. Watching from Nemesho 1, Yabot Elementary School, SDO Makati. Ayan, sa Metro Manila. Good afternoon, ma'am. We also have Des Castillo. Good afternoon. Watching from... The Historic Place, Trece Martires City in Cavite. Yes, we also have Ethel Christie Labor de Castro watching from SANHS San Agustin, Isabela. Ayan, so kamusta sa ating mga taga-Isabela dyan? I think parang ano dyan, mainit ba dyan ngayon? Or uh, are you experiencing thunderstorms dyan? So ingat-ingat po. Ayan, so number four, of course, the answer is... Bluff. Ayan. So, we cannot be completely isolated from the surrounding. Maybe yes, for some time. Pero, di ba, kapag completely isolated ka, you cannot survive. Kasi we also need the other factors para mabuhay. And then finally, for question number five, or uh, item number five, it says, energy can be obtained in chemical form in all the food we are taking in the body. So, this I think this one pertains to the Human. Oh, by the way, pala, no, so this one is found on module number 23, page 4 of the Pivot module. So what do you think is the answer for item number 5? Chemical energy ba yun? Yes, that's a fact. So we obtain uh, energy in the form of chemical energy sa mga food na kinakarin natin. So good job. So I hope kung team replay ka man, so sana makasunod ka sa, ano, sa pagsagot natin at pag discuss natin ang inyong mga learning Modules. Ayan. JJ, fact. Ayan. So, sipag ni JJ. Sana hanggang, ano, hanggang 4.40 sa mahan mo ako, ha? And then, of course, our viewers, make sure na paki-like, paki-heart react, and of course, paki-share ang ating live stream para mas marami pa po tayong maabot at patuloy po natin maitulay ang pagkatuto ngayong uh, pandemia. Alright, for this session, we only have one objective. So, we have to describe the different ways of how Representative animals reproduce. So senior high school learners, when we say representative animals, so may, mamaya si Tutor Tony, mag-mention lang ako ng mga uh, specific samples of animals that exhibit that particular kind of reproduction. So kaya tinatawag natin na, sila yung tinatawag natin na representative animals. So paano ba sila nag-reproduce? So that's yung inyo nang i-unlock natin for this afternoon. Ayan. So natitigil lang ako doon. All right, so let's proceed. So the title of our session would be Revolving Around Perpetuation of Lies. So reproduction, as you can see, mamaya, our study or our discussion will mention about how humans reproduce. Of course, uh, animals, the lower forms of animals like the, the starfish or the sea star. So the mammals, uh, yeah, we will be mentioning, of course, kilala niyo ba yan? Siya si Dolly. Sa, sa mga unang uh, nag-clone animals. And of course, mag-mention din tayo ng mga simple organisms, mga microorganisms. And lesser of the, uh, sorry, sa mga plantito tsaka sa mga plantita. Although mag-mention pa rin naman tayo ng mga plants, plants later on kung paano sila nag-reproduce. Uh, if you would uh, guess or if you would identify, kaya na ba identify ito, itong anong klaseng uh, uh, halaman to Ayan. So, ang tawag dito sa halaman na to, close up view kasi nilagay ko, that is your katakataka. So, kahit, ano, no, asexually reprodu uh, reproducing tong uh, ating katakataka, so may mga leaflets na tumutubo, and if you remove that leaflet, tanin mo siya ulit sa lupa, it can grow into another katakataka na plant or halaman. Right, so let's begin. Perpetuation of life. So it says that there are varieties of organism in the animal kingdom possessing different modes of reproduction. So iba-iba kung paano uh, mag-reproduce, paano mag-reproduce yung mga organisms. Depende of course sa kanilang habitat at depende primarily sa kanilang uh, organs or body parts. Ayan. Depending on kung simple ba or complex, depending on the complexity of their morphology, again, when we say morphology, ito yung form, ano itsura ng kanyang pinaka whole structure, and physiology, kung paano nagko-function yung kanyang mga organs. For us humans, of course, ayan, so kailangan ng daddy at saka mommy, kailangan ng sperm at saka ng egg para eventually ma-form yung zygote and then eventually magiging fetus siya. Mag-develop inside the uterus of the female organism. So that's how mammals generally reproduce, like us. For species, ayan, so isa sa mga interesting na animal kung paano nag-reproduce, ay ang ating mga, ayan, seahorses. So instead of the females carrying the, the babies or the little ones, ayan, si Daddy Seahorse ang 
Ah, yan. Ang siya yun, uh, sa kanya na nangyayari fertilization and then eventually, sa kanya rin magde-develop yung mga uh, little, little ones or yung mga baby na, na si horses. So, siya rin yung magluluwal, di ba? So, yun. So, father, male yung uh, nag-perform ng ganong function. So, depende nga sa, sa mga types of organisms. We also have, of course, ang mga masisipag natin ng mga bees, mga bubuyog. So, depende na rin sa klase ng bees. Did you know that bees can actually reproduce by sexual or asexual reproduction? So, mamaya, uh, I'll give you another trivia about bees. Okay, ayan. Lalaki po yung nangangalak. That's correct, JJ. Ayan. So, to give you an overview, so what is uh, sexual at asexual? So, na-mention na natin to last uh, session, di ba? So, pag sinabi natin asexual, single parent lang. So, hindi mo kailangan ng, hindi kailangan ng isang living organism ng partner. Wala nang male or female, alright? So the offspring, the offspring, kung sinabi natin offspring, ha, we refer to the child or the, the next generation, the next, the next organism na na-produce ng isang parent organism. So that is offspring. Single parent. And syempre, since nanggaling lang sa isang organism, so it is uh, I, uh, classified or identified as the exact copy of the genes. So, it carries the same genes dun sa parent. So, sa mga scientists, ang tawag dun, ang technical term for that ay clone. Okay? Uh, just like what happens sa mga, ayan, na-mention ko nito last session, yung mga hydra, diba? yung mga small organisms na makikita sa mga pond water natin, mga fresh water natin. Ayan, so isa lang yan. And then eventually, mag-grow na isang bud. Ayan, na meron ng parang full. Almost full na siya. And then mag-eventually mag-detach. Mamaya, kwento natin yung uh, story ni hydra. Since overview pa lang naman tayo, of course, uh, if you would remember, in your junior high school science, uh, starfish, although they can perform sexual reproduction, they can perform asexual reproduction as well. So it has five arms, ayan, pwede ma-detach ang isang arm, and then the arm, yung na-detach, ay mag-grow uh, into a full uh, grown na uh, starfish. Tapos isa naman yung naputol, mag-grow lang din siya. Kumbaga, complete organism pa siya. So, from one starfish or sea star, naging dalawa na sila. So, that is a sexual reproduction. Again, it's a clone, uh, single parent lang. Okay? When we say sexual reproduction, so, na-mention na rin natin yung term na gametes, di ba? So, gametes refers to the sperm cell para sa males and then egg cell naman para sa ating mga females. All right. So, sexual reproduction in animals is the production of new living organism by combining two gametes from different organisms from the male and the female. Ayan. So, tignan lang na natin ang uh, kung gaano uh, denivise or nila kinerate ni God yung ating mga uh, reproductive cells or the gametes. For the females, they have the egg cell, so which happens to be actually the biggest cell of the body, di ba? So, if you would remember... Although biggest siya, sobrang late niya pa rin kasi ang size niya lang, uh, compare natin siya sa parang pinhead, yung pinakaduno ng mga, ng mga pins, eh, gano'n lang siya kaliit. Pero it's actually the biggest cell in our body. And one of the smallest naman is the human sperm or the spermatozoa or the mature sperm na may kakaya ng uh, fertilize yung egg cell na yan. Okay, uh, senior high school learners, uh, don't that be confused. Uh, uh, hindi siya yung tamang scale. So, sperm cells are really, really that small. So, ito, highlight lang kung paano para makita yung buong structure ng, ng spermatozoa. We have the head, the mid piece and the, the tail. Alright. So, that's asexual and sexual reproduction. So, tulad ko itong pranaramis ko kanina, para sa mga plantitos at saka mga plantitas, some ferns, saka yung mga katakataka, ayan, sa mga nakakatuwa <laughs> na living organisms, especially the plants, kasi nga, mahilig din ako sa plants. Ayan, very amazing how they how they can reproduce ayan, sexually, sa plant lang. Sa, actually, sa isang dahon lang, ang dami nang nagrusulputan ng mga leaflets. Yung mga leaflets hanggang sa maging full-blown na sila. Ayan, hanggang pwede mo na siya i-detach, tanin mo na, may bago ka na ang halaman. Alright? Ayan, so ano yung mga key points na dapat natin tandaan for asexual reproduction? So, see, here are the key points. As I have mentioned, the formation of new individuals from the cells of a single parent. Okay? Next, it does not involve the union of gametes. Alright? So, since wala uh, male at uh, female cells, so it does not change the number of chromosomes present. So, tayo mga humans, you have uh, the diploid number, we have 46 chromosomes. So, 23 
mula sa father and then 23 mula sa mother. So for asexual, walang ganun. So kung number lang ng chromosomes ng particular organism, so iba-iba kasi yung number of chromosomes no, ng mga living organisms. Mamaya, may trivia ako tungkol sa chromosomes. And then the resulting offspring ay tinatawag natin clone. Kumaga exact copy siya ng parent na organism. So we have mentioned chromosomes kanina. No? So Ayan, did you know that different species have different chromosomes or number of chromosomes? Ayan, fruit fly, yung mga fly na dumadapo sa mga hinog natin ng mga fruits sa bahay or sa palengke, makita niyo palipad-dipad. Yun ang mga fruit fly natin, they have four pairs of chromosomes. So in total, they have eight. So ta-times two nila kasi pairs nga. So banana, 11 pairs. Human, of course, we have 23 pairs. And chimpanzee, ayan. Mga kamag-anak natin, yes, kamag-anak, 24 pairs. The cow has 30 and the chicken has 39 pairs. So, diba? so living organisms may variety na number of chromosomes. So, depende nga yan sa magiging, syempre, the chromosomes or the genes will reflect kung anong klaseng organism yung mabubuo or maform. Alright? So, chromosomes. Now you know. Ayan, let's try to... Before we proceed with the discussion, try nating sagutan tong mga activity na to found on page 6 and 7. The activity is called Reveal Me. Ayan. So, papalitan nyo lang yung ano, uh, tawag dito, yung mga vowels natin, uh, yung mga numbers natin sa corresponding uh, vowels natin. For example, yung 1 magiging A, E magiging 2, and so on. So, first part or first type ng asexual reproduction, the pieces of the parent breaks off and develops into a new individual. So changing the numbers yan, of course, we have fragmentation. Ayan na, so mga may hawak ng modules natin. Or mga worksheet. The process in which an organism divides into two and grow into a new organism. So palitan nyo lang itong 3 at saka 1. Divides into two. Ayan. So, yung word na yun ay, it refers to binary. So, binary means two. Alright? Sana makapag-comment kayo sa comment section natin. No? <laughs> I miss ko na yung mga nag-comments dyan. Alright? The third item, process outgrowth or the callus projecting from the parent and eventually buds off. Yung kanina para sa hydra. Yeah. So, it starts with B. Palitan nyo lang yung 5 tsaka 3 dyan. Of course, that will give you budding. Alright? So, fragmentation, binary, and then... Uh, budding. So yung binary pertains to fission na may binary fission niya later on. Next, ito, yung isa sa mga interesting na klase ng sexual reproduction. A mechanism of a sexual reproduction in which female offspring develops from unfertilized eggs. So kahit walang partner na male, kaya pa, na, kaya pa rin mag-reproduce ng organism. O, di ba? Amazing. So we have Partenogenesis. Ayan. We'll know more about partenogenesis later on. Ayan. So, JJ pa rin ang ating <laughs> masipag sumagot. Ayan. Sana sum masipag din sumagot. Okay, mahiya. Please interact with sir. Ayan. And finally, we have the last item. The, a type of fission that involves direct reproduction in which each portion regenerates missing parts to become a complete new animal depending on the axis of separation. So, mamaya, makikita niyan, yung tinatawag natin yung axis of separation. So, it's a kind of fission called transverse. Okay? Partenogenesis and transverse. Ayan. So, we are now ready to discuss about the different types of asexual reproduction. Tapos, magpapakita ko ng mga representative animals or organisms. So, let's begin with fragmentation. So, from the word fragment, ayan, a type of reproduction or cloning where one organism is divided into minor fragments or mga piraso, okay? Once divided, these fragments develop into individual ones which are fully grown, okay? So, ang best example dyan, hindi ko makakalimutan nung college, <laughs> tinitingnan namin yan sa microscope. We have the flatworms like this, ayan. So, in this slide or this particular uh, diagram or picture, ayan, day one to seven, kung paano ang mag-develop or nihinati sa tatlong fragments yung flatworm na ito and then eventually the three fragments uh, amazingly uh, nag-form nag ng, ng parang naging complete siya eventually magiging complete siya na another flatworm so from one naging tatlong flatworm na siya 
right? So this uh, type of reproduction called fragmentation, pwede siyang gawin or it is being exhibited or done by cyanobacteria, mga different uh, fungi species natin, plants, sa plants naman, um, yung stem cutting, if you're familiar, di ba? Yung mga drafting, marketing, that's a means or that's a kind of fragmentation actually. Okay? So from uh, stem, kami mo sa halaman, eventually mag-grow ng roots, tutubo na yung mga bago uh, plants, plant, alright? can also be done by animals, of course. We have the flatworms, sponges. Ang sponge yan, na nakikita sa dagat, they're actually the simplest form of animals. They're not plants. They're animals, mga sponge. And some annelid worms, mga segmented worms natin. At of course, ang ating sea star canino, yung starfish. Okay? Ayan. So, meron din tayo tinatawag sa biology or sa science na regeneration. Okay? Ano man pinagkaiba niya sa fragmentation? So, ayan. As you can see, itong hydra, kanina, di ba, budding, sa example ko, it can also perform fragmentation in which, ayan, yung mga fragments niya can grow into new individuals or new organisms. Pero sa mga butiki, ayan, mga butiki natin sa bahay, huwag natin silang papatayin, okay? Kasi may role sila sa sa environment natin. So, hayaan nyo lang silang pagpanggapang dyan or pasilip-silip sa kusina o kung saan man. Ayan. So, ang mga reptiles kasi like the li the lizards, di ba, minsan pa napuputol yung tail nila. Ayan. So, ang tawag doon is regeneration. They can grow another, uh, they can grow their tails. Pero ang ano dyan, do not be confused. Ha? That is actually not a form of reproduction. Kasi yung tail na naputol, hindi naman siya nag-grow into a into a new lizard. Okay? So, I hope you are understanding my point. So, yung tail, kailangan nyo maging bagong lizard para maging, as in, para maklassify siya as reproduction. Pero hindi. So, yung mechanism na regeneration na tinatawag sa pag napuputol yung tail ng lizards is not actually a form of reproduction kasi wala namang bagong organism na na-reproduce or na-produce. Okay? So, that's, uh, that is just a form of regeneration. Kaya may kakayanan yung mga reptiles, specifically the lizards, na mag-grow yung mga naputol na parts nila, especially the tail. Okay? Yan. So, the next one is after fragmentation. Okay, sana tayo. So, we have binary fission. Okay? Binary fission naman. Fission is magde-divide into two. Fission. Iba yung fusion kasi. Pag fusion, magsasama. Pag fission, mag-split into two. Magde-divide into two. Ayan. So, sa term natin sa biology or sa life science, separation of the parent cell into two daughter cells. So, tulad ng sa other forms of sexual reproduction, uh, yung pinaka-offspring niya, yung pinaka-anak o magiging anak carries the same genetic material ng kung ano yung meron sa parent DNA. Okay? So, one of the best examples, yung diagram kasi yan. So, are you familiar with yeast? Ayan, yung yeast, yung ginagamit ng baker seeds, ayan, yung ginagamit ng mga uh, bakers para magpa-rise ng mga dough. Ayan. So, living organisms, and actually, they are... Fungi, a form of fungi. So, parent cell, uh, following the diagram that we have, the DNA duplicates, of course, kailangan mag-duplicate muna ng genetic material kasi hindi naman pwede mag-split no one ng genetic material ng isa. Alright? Cytoplasm device, and eventually, we have two yeast na. So, ganun. Actually, mabilis lang siya. So, to give you an idea, oops, I forgot. Ayan. So, mamaya na pa pala uh, ang mga yeast natin sa yeast, sa budding. So, ang binary fission pala, by the way, is commonly sa mga bacteria. Ayan. So, mamaya pa pala yung yeast. Sorry, correction. So, binary fission is common among prokaryotes, like the, yung mga laging sinasabi, tiba archaea, eubacteria, cyanobacteria. Ayan. So, kaya sila mabilis magpadami. In a matter of seconds or minutes, they undergo binary fission, so mabilis sila talaga ang dumami. And mamaya, may encounter nyo rin, uh, yung amoeba, ayan. So, may mga representative organisms tayo. If you would notice, they can perform one or two means of a sexual reproduction. So, depende yun sa state na environment nila or kung ano yung mas appropriate sa, sa, sa existing condition nila. Okay? That's binary fission. Ayan. And later on din, mamaya, makiki ma uh, sinama ko na sa slide, no? yung mga tinatawag natin na protozoans or the, pro the protis. Sila yung mga intermediate between plant and animals. So, unicellular sila, eukaryotic, and kahit sobrang late nila, they are microscopic, 
uh, biologists uh, discovered that they have a very complex metabolic activities. So kahit very simple lang sila, complex naman yung, ano, yung uh, metabolic activities nila. So we'll find out more about these protozoans later on. Specifically, ito yung mga common na ginagamit sa pag-aaral ng biology. We have paramecium, ayan. So euglena at saka amoeba. So the protozoans kasi, uh, means of classification or kinaklassify sila ng mga scientists based sa uh, kung yung structure nila parang sila gumagalaw. Okay, so mamaya tignan natin sila later on, ha? Ayan, types of binary fission, ayan na sila. So for binary fission, we have three types. Binary, longitudinal, transverse, at saka irregular. So longitudinal, ayan lang, pa-vertical. So this one is a euglena, yung first example natin. Uh, ayan, so that's just a diagram. So kapititignan natin yung mga real pictures under the microscope. Ayan, euglena. Ayan, so si euglena is intermediate. Uh, between animal at saka plant species. Kasi ang yuglina, as you can see, kulay green sila, no? So, they can perform. They have chlorophyll, eh. So, they can perform photosynthesis or might as well, pwede rin silang, by, yung means ng pagkuha na ng pagkain is by means of their uh, other parts. So, in, bit, in between siya, animals at saka plants. That's your yuglina. For transverse, horizontal, binary fission, The best example is paramecium, para siyang chinelas, yung uh, shape niya. And yung, yung, kung yung glina, meron siyang parang tail na whip, parang latigo, para makagalaw siya, parang si sperms, diba? para may whip siya. Yung paramecium, it has mga tiny uh, cilia, ang tawag, yung cilia, para mga tiny hairs. Okay? It's paramecium, transverse naman. Uh, the best example naman for irregular binary fission is yung amoeba. Okay, amoeba ay pinagkukos ng amoebiasis. Ayan, sa mga maduduming water. Ayan. So, amoeba, since irregular ang shape niya, so kahit ano yung axis of separation niya, pwede. So, again, longitudinal, transverse, and irregular binary fusion. So, depende kung saan nagsiseparate yung uh, organism para makapag-reproduce ng panibagong organism. Okay? Ayan na, proceed tayo sa budding. So, nakadalaw na tayo, ha? fragmentation at saka binary fission. So, let's proceed with budding. Ayan naman. So, budding from the word bud. So, parang may mga outgrowth lang. So, ito yung sin sinasabi ko kanina. <laughs> sa yeast. Ayan. So, sa yeast. So, may yeast cell dyan. Step number one. Step number two, magde-develop siya ng bud. Ayan. Trying to reproduce, of course. So, the new bud. Ayan, meron na tayo. Hanggang, actually, pwede pa nga siya mag-form ng chains of But looking under the microscope, ganda yung tsura ng yeast. Ayan. As you can see, meron din siyang genetic materials, di ba? Uh, may mga parts ng cell. Ayan. Uh, on the scale of 10 micrometers, ayan, ganyan yung tsura ng mga yeast. And actually, yeast, o oh, baka napanood din ito sa news, uh, did you know that yeast is being utilized or used para makadevelop tayo ng oral na vaccine? So wala nang... Say no to tusok, <laughs> mga ini-inject na vaccines. Ayan, so isang proud uh, Filipino, Filipino pride, ayan, Filipino pride. A Filipino molecular biologist and at the same time, sa siyang parents, so a priest, uh, his team is working on the potential oral COVID-19 vaccine. So baka napanood niyo yan kanina sa news. So his name is Father Nicanor Austri uh, Austriaco. Uh, an MIT PhD holder, a molecular biologist, and a Dominican priest at the same time. So I hope, or uh, we hope, let's pray na mapagtagumpayan ni Father yan. No? So sabi niya kanina sa news eh, so since oral siya, hihahalo lang siya sa, ano, sa mga drinks, sa water or sa milk, tapos already i-consume siya. So wala nang tuso, okay? <laughs> so that's how the, the, the vaccine will work. Yeah, so good afternoon sa ating mga new ano, ah, viewers dyan, ha? I hope you're having a great time. So we are having the Senior High School Earth and Life Science na tutorial session with Sir Tsoni. Ayan. So another representative organism is for budding is the hydra. Kanina fragmentation siya, di ba? But commonly, uh, hydra can reproduce by budding. So ayan, may bud. Mag-grow eventually. Kapag ready na siyang harapin ang mga hamon ng... <laughs> Mundo, ayan, hiwalay na siya sa parent organism. So, sa totoong buhay, ganyan ni Chura, under the, the microscope. We have budding. Okay? Fragmentation, binary fusion, and budding. Ito na yung paapat, the parthenogenesis. 
So, yan. So, form of sexual reproduction by self-impregnation. So, yun ang term natin. Self-impregnation. Mabubuntis yung organism. Yung term, mabubuntis yung uh, isang organism kahit wala siyang partner. So, how does it work? Uh, the production of the zygote or the fertilized egg, ayan. So, it's referred to as the, the virgin birth. Kasi yung partenos, it's a Greek word which means virgin and then genesis which means birth. So, virgin birth. Okay, so walang uh, sexual contact or hindi na kailangan ng partner para makapag-produce ng organisms. And a lot of living organisms can actually perform or do parthenogenesis. Okay? Ay, nakapag-flash na pala ako. Sige, bago ko yan ano, alam niyo ba yung name ng uh, fish na yan? So aside from that, we uh, uh, other organisms, man. Other organisms that can perform parthenogenesis are the following. Scorpions, mga worms or the nematodes, mites, water fleas, wasps, some bees. Ayan, mga some bee species. Another insects, kung papansin nyo, mga lower forms of animals, mga invertebrates, mga insects can perform parthenogenesis. Kaya ang bilis-bilis nilang dumami. Ayan. It can also uh, be performed by vertebrates like amphibians, some fish, Reptiles and few bird species. Pero sa tao, syempre, hindi. <laughs> Kailangan pa rin ng male at saka ng female para makapag-reproduce ng panibago organism. Ayan, Sir Joel Kudyama. Ayan, good afternoon. Loyal viewer ko to. Yes, loyal viewer. Lagi itong nag, ano, nag, nanonood siya ng comment. Hi, Sir Joel Kudyama. Pa-shoutout po kami dito sa Flora National High School Division of Apayao. Yes. Sa mga kababayan po natin dyan sa... Apayao, Division of Apayao. Good afternoon po. I hope you're having a great time learning with Sir Tony. Ayan, can you identify the fish or the, well, it's a type of shark. Ayan, the zebra shark. Ayan, can undergo parthenogenesis. And, ayan, the Komodo dragon. So, sa mga pinakamalalaking lizards na nire-relate sa, of course, kamag-anak ay ng mga dinosaurs. Sabi nga, the one of the living dinosaurs of our time, yeah, the, Komo, the, the Komodo dragon can perform parthenogenesis. Alright? And of course, sa mga plantito at saka plantita, ayan, ang mga ayaw nyo makikita sa mga halaman ninyo. Kasi peste itong mga to actually. Eh. So these are the aphids. So nag, uh, dinedestroy kasi nila yung pinakasap or pinakajuice na mga stem or saka na mga leaves. Uh, so aphids can actually perform parthenogenesis. Genesis. All right. So let's have a quick ano lang. for our senior high school learners. And you can take a screenshot of this. Take note of this para matulungan ko kayo masagutan ng ating module. So module number 23, page 8. Nasa page 8 to. Inate ko lang. So 10 items kasi to. So our task is to identify kung anong mode of asexual reproduction. And at the same time, ayan, may description kasi. So i-ano lang naman natin. I-match lang naman natin siya. All right. So let's take. Uh, let's answer number one. Ayan. Honey bee. So sa sampo na natin na. So honey bees, as I've mentioned kanina, they can perform. Ayan. Letter E. Parthenogenesis. Females uh, egg develop into a new organism without being fertilized by a sperm. So amazing. So they have the egg cell. They can eventually per, uh, grow into a new organism without a sperm cell fertilizing it. So honey bees can perform parthenogenesis. Ayan, so good afternoon din sa ating mga other viewers. Ayan, abang naka-flash yung ano natin screen. So we also have Maria Elizabeth Cacho. Good afternoon po ma'am, watching from uh, CSJDM Bulacan. We also have Ma'am Lilith Pakulanang Cervantes Ferbilio. Good afternoon, watching from... Maitum. Saan po kaya yung maitum? Ayan. So, good afternoon po sa inyo. We also have Marie El Viseras. Good afternoon, ma'am. And mahabol sa ating session, uh, Joe Eri Santos. Watching from Zambales. Wow. Ang pogi ni Sir. Wow. <laughs> Saan naman? <laughs> Ayan po. Hello po kay Lumino Candela. Ayan po. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Sige. Try na natin sagutan. The Hydra. Ayan. Performs budding, of course. Letter B. Ang iba. Kanina, di ba? Binary fission. Uh, starfish can perform, of course, fragmentation. Diba yung mga arms? Sa sa mga arms na can grow into another organism. Flatworms. Kanina yung mga hinate. Tatlo. Fragmentation din yun. Okay? Sige yan. Flash ko lang ng konti para at least maano nyo. 
na digest. <laughs> Next, we also have, ayan, na, oh, aphids. Kanina, kaka-mention lang, fresh na fresh. Aphids can perform uh, parthenogenesis of the blue-green algae. So, ayan, bacterium, o bacteria, binary fission, okay? Black worms, so it's a type of worm. Ayan, fragmentation. Yeast, kanina, they may develop into an oral vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, can perform budding. And then paramecium can perform, of course, your binary fissure. So stay lang natin for a while para may digest. Good afternoon po, Ma'am Ophelia A. Velasquez, watching from SDO Guerrino Province. Ayan po, good afternoon po sa inyo. Ayan, so let's proceed na with the discussion of sexual reproduction. Ayan, so kanina, pinagresent natin yung mga key points for asexual reproduction. Here now are the key points for sexual reproduction. Kung kanina, isang parent lang. So for sexual, syempre, dalawang parents na. It's the perpetuation of a new organism from two organism with the use of gametes. Of course, sperm at saka the egg. In this process, male gametes, which is the sperm cell, fuses with a female gamete known as the egg cell to form a diploid cell called zygote. Yung zygote, uh, it's the fertilized egg. Once na fertilized na ng isa, yung pinaka-champion na sperm na nakapag-fertilized egg, ang tawag na sa kanya ay zygote or the fertilized egg. So, it contains now the two sets of chromosomes from the mother and the father. So, yung diploid cell, that is the two N, so kompleto na siya from the male at saka female nga. Kapag isa, pag, uh, pag sa nanay lang saka, or sa tatay lang, that is called haploid, half. Haploid. Pero spelling H-A-P-L-O-I-D. Haploid and saka diploid. During sexual reproduction, the genetic material contained in their chromosomes combine to produce genetically diverse offspring. So, syempre, yung offspring or yung anak, iba na siya. Hindi siya kanina, di ba, clone yung sa asexual. This one, it's a unique, kumbaga, combination na. Product na siya ng combination ng male at saka ng female uh, DNA. Okay, tayo yun. Kaya nga nagkakaroon ng variety sa mga living organisms just like us. We also have to discuss oviparous versus viviparous. So, madali lang naman to. Pag oviparous, these are the egg-laying animals. Sino ba yung mga nag-lay ng eggs? The birds, the reptiles, ayan, mga insects, okay? Some of those, although some mammals, pero generally, ang mammals, like us, uh, we give birth to the, yun, we give birth, nakanganak talaga, live, viviparous, okay? Although, may mga mammals na nag-lay ng eggs, like the platypus, the echidna, okay? So, let's try to answer this, mabilis. Ayan, so, oviparous versus viviparous. Oviparous pertains to the egg-laying animals. Oviparous, born alive yung kanila mga offspring or anak. Turtle, of course, that is oviparous. Eagle is oviparous. You can comment sa, ano, ha, sa comment section natin. O, former student ko, hi, Rexil. Kamusta? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Sana ma-share mo yung session natin. Giraffe, of course, is viviparous. Salmon is oviparous. Monkey, viviparous. Human, mga common to eh. By the way, beside the name of the common animal, common name of the animal is the scientific name. Maraming tataka kayo. Ayan, scientific name po yan. Okay? Human, homo sapiens. Frogs, they're a common frog. Oviparous yan. Are you familiar with, uh, correction lang to, it's bonobo, no? Sa, sa module kasi nakalagay bonobo. For, pero actually, it's bonobo. The scientific name is panpaniscus. It is viviparous. It's mammal. Ayan siya. Para siyang, ano, Small version ng chimpanzee, if you're familiar, chimpanzee, yeah, no? primates. Clownfish are oviparous, of course, they lay eggs, and cattle, mga baka, viviparous yan, yeah. alright? Let's proceed with the next activity. I think this one is the last. Paswak tayo sa ating time. I hope you're having a great time, no? So, complete lang natin yung statement below by naming the figure or drawing given. So, during sexual reproduction, a haploid. So, tandaan, a haploid. So, tayo mga tao, we have 23, 23. 23 plus 23, 46. A haploid sperm unites with a haploid, of course, ang kapartner niya, ayan, para si Romeo tsaka si Juliet lang yan, si egg. Uh, a haploid egg cell to form a diploid. So, 46 na. In human, the chromosomes of the sperm cell has N is equal to 23, and the egg cell N is equal to 23. After fertilization, the combined egg cell and sperm cell known as the zygote contains two sets of chromosomes. It represents the diploid now 
equivalent to 46 chromosomes. It later grows and develops to be, so pwede possible answer dyan, ayan, pwede, actually pwede embryo, tapos maging fetus, child, or in general term natin sa biology is offspring. So that is guess me, no? Alright. So, ayan. So, of course, our session will not be complete without our hashtag, be inspired, and hashtag, be blessed uh, segment kung saan dinerelate natin ang mga lessons natin sa science sa totoong buhay. Of course, we have discussed about diversity, we discuss discussed about uh, celebration of life, di ba? In uniqueness ng buhay. So, ang sabi dito sa quotation natin for this week, life is not always perfect. But, it always what you make it. Diba? Sabi nga, life is what you make it. So make it count, make it memorable, and never let anyone steal your happiness. So yun, nasa pandemia na nga tayo. So syempre, we choose to be, ano, piliin na natin maging masaya together with our family. Pwede pa naman natin makontak yung mga friends natin, our teachers, diba? yung mga usual na namimiss natin. Syempre, yung mga relatives natin. Ayan. So let's choose to be happy. Diba? Alam kong, syempre, ako din, tao lang din na nakaka-experience na anxiety, but it would be, ang tip lang ni Sir Tony, choose to be happy. So, find happiness in the everyday blessings na binibigay sa atin ni Lord. Okay? So, hashtag be inspired and hashtag be blessed. Ayan, nanonood si Mama. Hello, Ma. <laughs> nanonood si Mama. Hello, Mama. See you soon. Ayan. So, thank you for watching our session for Senior High School Earth and Life Science Week number 3. You can reach me via email, via Facebook, via YouTube channel. Yan, subscribe po kayo, Mr. Voice Educator PH. And sa bagong platform natin, mga senior high school students, you can discover wakelet.com. You can create digital uh, portfolios. Yan, kailangan niyan, especially kapag mag apply kayo ng trabaho soon or mag uh, mag yes, ma you can create digital portfolios. So kita-kits tayo sa mga platforms na yan. Susunod po sa ating session would be ShooterCat for Media and Information Literacy. So once again, this is Sir Tony, Shooter, to Shooter Tony. See you next week for Senior High School Earth and Life Science. Bye-bye. God bless po. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e life free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!